What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today's video is one that I am so excited about even beyond the realm of normal excitement because if you've been here a while you know I am such a big fan of Louise Seigden and all of her work and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted her very first miniature who I named Brittany Bertelson the fourth. There is obviously no way to improve upon the absolute glorious box art. So I decided to just go for something completely different and do a wintry theme. So you can tell he is out in the cold. He is ice fishing. I can just imagine him with a little scarf. I thought about sculpting one onto him, but like that wouldn't have worked out and probably would have ruined the model. And I feel like crying thinking about it, honestly. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoy seeing my painting process on him. So this is what he looked like right out of the box and you guys he has a little butt. Oh my gosh, I can't take it. He's so cute. These are the three colors I am using for the underpainting. So the purple that's on the left is called Oxford Blue and that is going to be all over everywhere. So all of the shadows will be that color uh, starting on the back and then I'm going to be working up towards that middle blue for the front half of him and then after that I am slowly working up to that sunset red color just for his face and marking the different areas like this and the underpainting will really bring more attention to his face the tones there will be warmer and overall he will have a very wintry cool feel because all of the shadows will either be some shade of blue or some shade of purple so this color is called arctic glacier and I'm actually going to be using this to layer up from all three of these colors. So for any areas on the model that are underpainted in blue, I am going to be working up from almost that pure blue up to the Arctic Glacier color along that gradient. And you'll just kind of see, I'm just layering as normal. So I kind of go up a few shades and highlight and then I will glaze back over the transitions to make it smoother. Or you can slowly layer up by going just small jumps in color. However you feel like layering is totally fine. And I use a combination of regular layering, glazing, wet blending. I kind of do it all and the steps kind of blend into each other if that makes sense I don't really know um so yeah I'm gonna be highlighting up on the areas that were underpainted in the sunset pink and you'll see that happening here and it definitely looks a little bit drastic at first but as you keep building layers up we are working towards uh the final highlight for the entire model which will be pure arctic white I think was the name of the color um so yeah, just to kind of review, because I feel like that made literally no sense. Any areas that are underpainted purple, I am blending from that purple color up to the Arctic white color. And then any areas that are underpainted blue, I am blending from that pure blue up to the Arctic white color. And then any areas that are paint underpainted in that sunset red pinky color, I will be doing the same and so that's essentially it. And the effect this will have on the model in the end will be that the highlight for the entire model is the same, but the gradient working from shadow up to highlight will be very different. And this will bring more attention to his face. And on the back here, I am just showing you how I am blending up from the purple up to the Arctic white. If you think I would demonstrate this on any other area than his little high knee, then you do not know me at all. The cool thing about painting in this style is that if you get sick of painting one section, you just go to another one. I was kind of not feeling the purple on the back anymore, so I took a break and decided to start layering up the blue on the front. And it almost felt like painting an entirely new model because the colors just blend into each other in such a different way. Uh, so it can be very refreshing to switch out like this. And overall, I just have been finding myself painting this way more and more. Um, I've been toying with underpainting for a couple years now. Um, but actually building the volumes according to the underpainting is like the next 
level, I guess, the next step into really solidifying those different colors in different areas. And it is so much fun. I definitely recommend you try it. If you like the way that my guy looks at the end of this, you should definitely give this a shot and let me know if you do. So you can see here, I have now worked all the way up to the Arctic Glacier color pure, and I can use this highlight on any areas, even if they were originally blue or originally pink, because we have slowly worked along that gradient. So that is really exciting. And this is what he looked like at the end when all of his skin was highlighted. And I was so happy at this point. Um, so we're going to start working on the pink areas of him. I'm using magenta. We are going to be doing the exact same thing. So on any areas that are blue, we will be blending from that blue up into magenta. And this is just the exact same way we did on the skin, except the final highlight will be the pure magenta rather than the Arctic Glacier. When I got to the final highlights on his ears, I decided to start stippling so that that way they would have a bit more texture and they would have higher contrast with his skin that I left pretty smooth. So yeah, you just see me doing that here. One thing I didn't show was that I added the color ice yellow into the magenta for these really tiny highlights along the edge. And that's just to bring more light and attention to the stippling and overall texture of these ears. I went ahead and did the exact same thing for his nose um, so that they would be matchy matchy. So for the fuzzies on his chest, we are going to be adding an ivory and acrylic retarder to our blue mix. And that is because the brush I'm using is very, very tiny. And so I didn't want the paint to dry out on it while I was making the hair brush strokes. So just adding a little bit of retarder kept it from drying on my brush and I was able to get the texture that I wanted on the hair. And yeah. So this is what he looked like. We have a lot of cool tones going on, so we are going to start brightening it up. And these are the colors that I'm using for his eyes. And in order to build some volume on these sphere-shaped eyeballs, we are starting with the darker color. And then, of course, building up into the lighter color as we get up into the center. And one thing I really liked about this sculpt is that there are marked little areas. I'm not sure how well you can see on screen, but there are marked little areas for the pupils. And so it made it really easy to go in first with that darker blue and then into the center with that lighter blue and not worry about if the sizing was right, if they were going to be in the right direction. And all of the things that are stressful about eyes just didn't have to worry about it because... They were very kindly sculpted right onto the model. I took one white dot and gave each one a glare and then I was happy with it. Light umber and red gray is my go-to combination for most bone, horns, teeth, anything of that nature. I'm just doing a little simple layering here. I am working while the paint is wet and so it's kind of like wet blending. I'm not throwing a bunch of paint on there but it just makes those transitions a bit smoother to work a little quickly and get the layers added on before the paint completely dries. And this was a really quick process. Just took a few seconds and then I went ahead and moved on. Um, so from here on out guys, really it is just little details, but I, like I said earlier, I did really want to make sure that all of the tones were warm. So the 
a little fishing pole is warm. This fish friend in particular, I wanted to really stand out and be a kind of bright orange. I am still blending into blue from the underpainting. And if you blend orange and blue, you get this really nice shade of brown and it's the perfect transition color. So I just kind of worked that up before I started layering on the brighter shades of orange over top. So something I do sometimes when trying to build up a really stark contrast is to go in and do a very drastic highlight like you just saw here. And then once that is established, I will water down my paint quite a bit, mix it with my mid-tone color, and just sort of glaze the edges to make it a bit more smooth. And it makes it a lot faster than doing like a hundred layers to slowly build up that contrast. If you just plop that contrast on and then trust yourself to blend it out after with some glazes, it's a lot more efficient, doesn't take long at all. And I think it just takes it to another level that would be kind of hard to achieve with layering in my opinion it would just take a really long time i don't have the patience for that and this is what my fishy look like after he was done this is my secret not so secret non-metallic metal steel recipe and it is just those two colors dark sea ben which is just a special version of dark sea blue and then that warm white you can use any cream for it it doesn't matter but all you do is just base coat with that dark blue and then you just slowly start adding in the warm white the warm white towards the end acts as the absolute perfect highlight and it just gives you this really nice cool tone non-metallic metal and it is such a joy and people are always shocked when i say that my color the colors that i use for steel are just those two um it really just makes it so much easier to not have like 12 colors that you're blending together obviously it depends on what you're painting and the atmosphere and like the tone you're going for but most of the time that is just what i do sometimes if i feel like it i will add just a little bit of white which you see here and um you know less is more when it comes to that but it just gives it that little pop did those for all of his little earrings and then we were ready to move on So I probably should have used a putty or something to stick him to his base, but I ended up gluing him and then had to pop him off, which is traumatizing for both of us, I'm sure. Uh, this is my color palette for the basing that I am about to show you. And I wanted a lot of purples and blues and whites, and I want it to look very arctic. I am just pouring these right onto the base from the dropper bottles, and then I am wet blending them together to make this really, really beautiful sort of fantasy glacier gradient i don't really know what you want to call it but i had so much fun with this part it's actually probably one of my favorites um and yeah this is how i left it i like that you can see the brush strokes and this is a piece of resin that i made um from a mold so i took a piece of slate and i made a mold using blue stuff filled that mold up with resin and then cured it then I'm just going to be gluing it right onto the base that we just painted. And then I will be surrounding that area with more of that resin to sort of make it look like water is surrounding this glacier because he is fishing after all. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to pop that in my curing booth and then a quick dry brush. Or I guess this is more of an overbrush with pure white to make it look snowy and extra cold and freezy reuniting him with his base was such a happy and joyous moment and i felt so incredibly fulfilled after finishing him uh overall i just enjoyed painting this model so much and i just want to thank louise and her team for making such an incredible model i am so excited to see what other models will be out from rascal town i definitely plan on painting all of them and yeah i'm just really really excited about this project and for what's to come as always thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video